Hi listeners, it's Kat here from Cast a Guest. I just wanted to take a quick minute outside of the show to let you know about empowerment coaching. I know this is probably confusing a lot of people right now. Outside of telling you about true crime, I work as a life coach, helping others achieve their goals, break down barriers, eliminate limiting beliefs, or anything else a person may need guidance to achieve their most authentic life. The world has been upside down since 2020, and I know a lot of us may be lost, confused, or unsure as to what we want and how to get there. If you think speaking with a life coach may help you, please feel free to contact me at alteregowellness at outlook.com or at alteregowell on Instagram. Okay, now back to our show. Hey, motherfuckers. Hey, you gentle, gentle folk. How's it going? That's rhetorical. Today, on Cast a Guest, we got, uh, again, another horrible, depressing story to share with you. Should be a lot of fun. We got a few things to talk about. Um, here's a short list. Elephant butts. Ice picks. Dog collars. And gynecology. If you're thinking... Season 3 of Tiger King is out? You're wrong. If they did do a season 3 of Tiger King, they would definitely touch on most of those items. Nope, today we are going to be talking about the infamous fucking asshole, the toy box killer. This one's going to suck. And it sucks so bad that we had to cut out a few fucking horrible bits and pieces. So, grab some brown liquor, grab something that numb the pain. And let us get into this. I'm John. And I am Cat. Because Cat is making dinner. And we're cast aghast. Hello, everyone. My people, I, King Edward the <laughs> Third, decreed that we are engaging in war with Germany. Oh my good, good uh, impersonation there, impression. I guess I, I don't. Say. I don't know which. Which? Oh, he was George, not Edward. Mm. Well, you almost had it. And Jeffrey Rush is like. Well, That was such a great movie. (laughs) And I'll never forget the Oscars for that year. They played that speech while they were showing the best film nominations. And it was like Toy Story 3 and all that (laughs) playing while that speech is going. It was so good. Yeah. Back when people used to watch the Oscars. Yes. When it was worth watching the Oscars. Yeah. Well, this year with Will Smith's slap. I mean... Someone should just douse him with, like, gasoline. <laughs> like, he's such a stupid fucking that ass. That was a fucking... I I hope... I can't wait to hear Chris Rock speak more about it. But oh, I can, absolutely. I, I can totally fuck- uh, respect him just still taking time to process that. We'll cover that maybe one of these days. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for today's show? Are you going to give us a disclaimer? Oh yeah, disclaimer. Hey folks, listen up here. We at Cast a Guest, uh, we do true crime, but we like to have a fun time as well. So if you prefer your true crime to be dark and cringy and dank and serious, then we're not for you. Go fucking watch like one of the Kevin... Uh, Go 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 watch Crime Junkie. (laughs) We're we're more like the Tim Burton Batman's. You know, it's it can be dark, but it's a laugh. We're not we're not like the Dark Knight. We 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 need to have a little bit of levity to get through the rape and the murder and the mayhem. So, for the rest of you who are going to stick around, uh, we also recommend harsh liquor. Yes, we are (laughs) beer and whatever whatever is going to get you 
through the next 30 or so minutes. 30 or so? <laughs> 30 or so minutes. And then afterwards, when the depression starts to seep down into your subconscious while you're trying to play fucking Witcher 3. Or Animal Crossing. Or Tiny Tina's Wonderland, which is what we'll be doing after this. We'll be shooting at things. And deep down in my subconscious, I'm going to be thinking about the rape of a four-year-old or some fucking horrible shit. (laughs) And it's going to wreck my goddamn weekend. Well, we don't have that today, but... Oh, thank goodness. All right, everyone. Good luck to you. Good luck to me. And uh, let's get on with the fucking show. Thank you for that long-winded... Disclaimer. (laughs) Long-winded. Kind of like after I have Taco Bell. All right. Today, we are talking about David Parker Ray. And we're having Caesars. Yes, we are drinking Caesars. Um, With David Parker Ray. He is most known as the Toy Box Killer. Oh, fuck. When they have an actual moniker, it's like you know this is going to be god-awful. David Parker Ray was born November 6, 1939, in Bellin, New Mexico, to parents Cecil and Nettie Ray. The family was tight financially, so they lived with Nettie's parents in a small ranch home. David's grandfather was known to be an abusive disciplinarian. He did have a little sister as well, but they were split up when their grandfather passed away. David's father, who was an abusive alcoholic, would visit them from time to time and would give David porn magazines that depicted sadomasochistic pornography. That's my favorite (laughs) subgenre of porn. Sadomasochistic. Can you imagine giving that to a child? Like what a sick... Like here you go kid. This will... Oh my god. This will put hair on your chest. I never got into sadomasochistic pornography as as, as a... How old? As a Mm six-year-old? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that wasn't my kind of porn when I was six. <laughs> I was more into the the kind of porn that you find under your dad's bed and read yeah. it real carefully, and then you hear steps coming up the stairs, and you're like, "Oh my god!" And you gotta throw it back under the bed, <laughs> and then you go into your room and you you know hump a pillow and try and remember the fucking image that you saw for two sixths of a second. Oh my god, that's too funny. You know, and it was like you know, as a elder millennial, it was it wasn't even the nice porn that we yeah, have now. It was, you know, it was hairy porn. <laughs> Harry 80s porn on glossy pages. <laughs> pointy, pointy boobs and, yeah. and full bush. Yeah. You can't get an erection off that now, unless that's what you're into, in yeah. which case that's All another of, yeah, subgenre. We, we do not king shame. Yeah, no, absolutely. As a teen, David attended Mountaineer High School, but was bullied for being shy. While in his teenage years, David also developed sexual fantasies about raping, torturing, and murdering women. Can I just say that the name Mountaineer... <laughs> Is a real stupid fucking name. <laughs> sounds like some. It sounds very Canadian. <laughs> Mountain Air High School. Welcome to Valley Ground <laughs> Elementary School. I'm just trying to think of all the biomes in mm, Minecraft. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to Desert Wind Collegiate. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, so he developed uh, sexual fantasies about raping, torturing, and murdering women. After graduating high school, he enlisted in the army where he worked as a mechanic. He eventually received an honorable discharge. David would eventually marry and divorce four times and would have two children, one eventually becoming his accomplice in his crimes, Glenda Jean Ray, but she went by Jesse Ray. For a second there, I was like, this is the story of uh, Ross from Friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> four times two children, yeah. one becomes a, an, an, an accomplice. accomplice. <laughs> in March of 1999, in Elephant Butt, New Mexico, is that butt or butte? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like the, the they're they're like elephant, elephant, elephant butte. So is that butte or butt? I don't know. I, yeah, I would I, say. I why would it be elephant butte? What other words end in u t t e? Flute. Oh no, that's one t. Wrong. Okay. It's, anyways, it's New Mexico. So. Yes, in New Mexico, nine one one received a number of calls about a woman trying to flag down cars. She was naked and wearing a dog collar around her neck. This woman was Cynthia Vigil. Cynthia was kidnapped two days earlier by David and his girlfriend and another accomplice named Cindy Hendy. Cynthia described her story of survival on Oxygen's show Killer Couples. She had been working as a sex worker and had gone to Ray's RV for a date. Once she got inside the RV, David closed the door, presented a badge, and claimed to be an undercover cop. He put her in cuffs, tasered her, drugged her, and blindfolded her. 
She was then woken up, chained to a bed, and heard a tape starting to play. And this was David's fucked up idea of a welcome letter. I have to say, like, the, when, you put in, like, cathartic sentences, but you say it, like, so, like, and this was David's fucked up idea of a welcome letter. Don't give away it's, my secrets. <laughs> Anyways, it's you can cut a, that out, so I'm fucking not. So I'm going to read a bit from this tape. It's very long and disgusting, so I won't read the whole thing, but I warn you that it's very graphic, so feel free to skip forward if you don't want to hear how disgusting this man was. First of all, I'm not trying to do any acting or voice acting in this. I'm just going to read it straight. So just use your imagination. Okay, bitch. We both know what you've been brought here for. I'm going to use you for a sex slave. And it's going to be painful as hell. That's the way I want it to be. You're scared or very pissed off. I'm sure you've already tried getting your wrists and ankles loose. And no, you can't. You probably think you're going to get raped. And you're fucking sure about that. Here, your status is no more than that of one of the dogs or the animals out in the barn. Your only value to us is that you have an attractive and usable body. Now, I've already told you that you're going to be here a month or two or maybe three if you keep us turned on. If it's up to my lady, we'd keep you indefinitely. She says it's just as much fun and less risky. I don't like killing a girl unless it's absolutely necessary. So I've devised a safe alternate method of disposal. I had plenty of bitches to practice on over the years, so I've pretty well got it down pat. And I enjoy doing it. I get off on mind games. After we get completely through with you, you're going to be drugged up real heavy with a combination of sodium pentothal and phenobarbital. They are both hypnotic drugs that will make you extremely susceptible to hypnosis, auto-hypnosis, and hypnotic suggestion. You're going to be kept drugged a couple of days while I play with your mind. By the time I get through brainwashing you, you're not going to remember a fucking thing about this little adventure. You won't remember this place, us, or what had happened to you. There won't be any DNA evidence because you'll be bathed, and both holes between your legs will be thoroughly flushed out. As for escaping, I'm sure you'll try to figure out a way. That's human nature. But it's not hardly even worth talking about here. It would not be prudent on our part to have you running around in the woods screaming rape. It would be an embarrassment, to say the least. Consequently, you are going to be kept in an environment that is even more secure than a prison cell. If it has not already been done, very shortly a steel collar is going to be padlocked around your neck. It has a long, heavy chain that is padlocked to a ring in the floor. The collar will never be removed until you are turned loose. It's a permanent fixture. The hidden playroom where you're going to be kept has steel walls, floor, and ceiling. It is virtually soundproof and has a steel door with two keyed locks. The hinges are welded on and there are two heavy deadbolts on the outside. The room is totally escape proof, even with tools. Anytime that you are left unattended in the room, your wrists will be chained and there are electronic sensors to uh, let us know if you move around too much. And if that's not enough, there is a closed circuit TV system with a surveillance camera. It's wired to the main TV in the living room so we can check on you once in a while or just sit and watch you for the fun of it. Uh, He then goes on to talk about bestiality and his German shepherd getting involved. We decided we would not uh, read any of that shit, but feel free to look it up if you want. You got to know. Proceed with caution. You got to know it's bad if we're not going to fucking read it. Mm -hmm. He continues on with, quote, let's talk about uh, your training the rules and punishment. Here, you are a slave and discipline is extremely strict. You're going to be given a set of rules, things you can and cannot do, and you will learn to comply because each time you violate a rule, you will be punished. As soon as each rule is told to you, it will become law as far as you're concerned. And you know what's going to happen every time you fuck up? We'll use a couple of methods of punishment. A whip is an excellent training aid. So is an electroshock machine. Anytime you get out of line, 
One or both will be used on your body, and I assure you it will not be pleasant. There are not many rules, and they're very easy to remember. But you're going to make mistakes. Every slave does. I don't like repeat offenders. It gets me very upset. During the first few hours, the first time you violate a certain rule, uh, the tape recording skips here, a teaching process. The second time you violate the same rule, you'll be lightly punished. And the third time you violate it, it's going to be full punishment. After the first day, we won't cut you any slack at all. We will expect total obedience. Now let's start this off right. You are a slave. You don't realize it yet, but you will eventually. I'm your master and the lady is your mistress. You will be totally docile. Initially, when we've got a new girl in the playroom, we're kind of like a kid with a new toy. You are fresh and exciting and we're going to spend a lot of time playing with you. Later, after the newness wears off, things will settle into something of a routine. We'll only be spending three or four hours each day in the playroom. You're going to have a lot of free time to rest, sleep, watch TV, or whatever. If you're acting halfway decent, you will be left in a reasonably comfortable position so you can relax. Don't try either one of us. It is an extremely dangerous thing to do because if necessary, I'm capable of doing things to your body and torturing you in ways that you can't even imagine. The playroom is equipped with a full set of surgical instruments which I have had occasion to use and will again as necessary. I've already told you what will happen if you bite. To be completely safe here, you have to be docile. Since I'm going to be caring for your body for the next month or two or three, there are certain things that I need to know. I have prepared a questionnaire that I fill out with each new captive. Some of the questions are going to be embarrassing, but you should answer them truthfully and completely. You damn well better. I don't want to catch you in a lie. The questions will be in reference to your physical condition, any medical conditions that I need to know about, medications, sex habits, sexual preferences, any childbirth you might have had, period dates, and so forth. Be smart and be a survivor. Don't ever scream. Don't talk without permission. Be very quiet. Be docile and obedient. And by all means, show proper respect. Have a nice day. Wow, this guy's a fucking cunt. Now, this tape goes on, I think it's like 50 minutes or something like that. The total tape. It is horrific. I led... I. I read the entire transcript. The things he says, I can assure you this is the PG version. It takes a lot to make me cringe or look away, but reading this transcript definitely did both of those things. It's absolutely sickening and frightening that a person like this and people like him exist. Yeah, that's the the trans. If this is the PG version, like holy. Oh fuck. yes, I it is out there, so I know you guys uh, will likely do your own googling. Just please proceed with caution because it is absolutely horrible. Now, as you can imagine, terrible things were done to Cynthia. But after the third day of being held captive and tortured, an opportunity for escape came up. David left the supervising to his girlfriend Cindy, his accomplice, while he left the trailer. Cindy left the keys to Cynthia's restraints within reach of her, and then she left the room. It's like, it, it feels like she's toying with her. Like, how could someone be so stupid? Cynthia had just enough slack in her restraints to reach the keys and release herself. Nice. She did try to call police from the phone inside the trailer, but Cindy had come back into the room and smashed a lamp over Cynthia's head. This dazed her, but didn't knock her out. The two women struggled inside the trailer. Eventually, Cynthia was able to get her hands on an ice pick from the collection of torture instruments and stabbed Cindy with it. Oh, that's awesome. She ran for the door and finally was out of the trailer for the first time in three days. Cynthia was naked, only wearing the dog collar that just moments ago kept her bound to the trailer. She was also covered in blood from being hit in the head with the lamp. She ran in front of cars trying to get them to stop, but they didn't. She eventually came across a mobile home with their lights on. She burst inside through the unlocked door and locked herself inside. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the homeowner just sitting there yeah. and this bloodied, naked woman burst in? Oh, no kidding. The homeowner immediately called police, clothed Cynthia, and waited for the police together. 
Cynthia was able to direct police to the trailer where they found two mobile homes on the property. One being the home of David and Cindy, and the other was filled with surgical tools, torture devices, restraints, anatomy books, and a diary of David's that suggested he had murdered several women. Fuck. Ray's, quote, toy box was a bunker-like cargo trailer that also housed a custom-built gynecological chair with electrodes to administer electric shots. Holy fuck. During the investigation, police also found several home videos he took of his victims. David's diary did not contain names of his victims, only dates and number of times tortured for each victim. I just don't trust people who keep diaries. (laughs) Another victim by the name Angelica Montano came forward, saying she was raped and tortured over the course of four days after accepting an invite from Cindy to hang out with her at her boyfriend's house. She was sure they were going to kill her, but she begged for her life, saying she had a young child. This touched Cindy, and they let her go. Angelica was able to track down an off-duty deputy, but he didn't believe her story, so it never got reported. What? He was convinced it was made up because it was so outlandish. Please tell me something horrible (laughs) happened to that fucking idiot. I have no idea. Another woman named Kelly Garrett came forward with her story of abduction. She was abducted and tortured after having an argument with her husband. She left the house to cool off. She walked downtown and visited a couple bars where she met Jessie Ray, David's daughter. Oh, yeah. She offered to give Kelly a ride home, but just needed to swing by her dad's real quick. She was then confronted with weapons, drugged, and tortured for days. Afterwards, David dropped her off at home in an official park ranger's uniform, saying she was wandering along the lakefront. Because she was kept drugged, Kelly couldn't recall what happened to her, so it never got reported. And I did read that her husband didn't believe this story either until after David's arrest. Oh, really? Yeah, so can you just imagine, like, just thinking she was lying the whole time only to find out she was tortured? That's so fucked. However, after his arrest, the investigators did find the audio tapes of her torture, so of Kelly's torture. David Ray drugged these women with drugs that would cause amnesia, which is why other victims that were still alive did not come forward. However, these three survivors were enough to convict David Ray Parker, Cynthia Hendy, and his daughter, Jessie Ray Parker, on over 25 counts of kidnapping and rape. His girlfriend, Cynthia Hendy, agreed to testify against David. According to Killer Couples, she testified that she knew of at least 14 girls that he had murdered. She also revealed other accomplices by the name of Roy Yancey. Yancey crumbled during questioning and admitted that David ordered him to kill a woman named Marie Parker. Wow. Cynthia Hendy was sentenced in the year 2000 for her part in the abduction and torture of the three victims and sentenced to 36 years. She was eligible for parole and was released in 2019. Oh, fuck that. Just 19 fucking... 36 years! She... Fuck, that's so fucking stupid. When it was his daughter's turn, Jesse Ray, David offered to plead guilty to all charges in exchange for his daughter's release. Jesse Ray served two years in jail and five years probation. Fuck that. David Parker was sentenced to 200 to 223 years. He agreed to have a meeting in 2002 about the 40 other victims he had, but he passed away from a heart attack before the meeting could take place. Fuck that. The investigators released items of jewelry and clothing that was collected from David's residence and torture room in hopes that families of missing people could identify any of the items. We don't know whether Yeah, no, no. Well, I, in their privacy, you know. Yeah, I have not. Yeah, well, nothing has been publicly put out if well, they came forward. That was bullshit. So, and each of them should have been crucified. There is a lot of detail of what happened to these women i out of the respect for the survivors uh kept that out they're still here and they're still having to relive these horrors in their memories and their nightmares and so i didn't want to go into the detail that they went through it is absolutely horrific and 
I didn't want to go into, I didn't want to glamorize this guy. I know we're a true crime podcast, but there's a, this is a well-known story. So you, you can go down your own rabbit hole. And, uh, if you choose to read about the things he did, then that's up to you. I didn't want to subject you guys because it truly is horrific to put it in a visual. He kept these women tied up in that gyno chair with everything exposed and open and they were free for the taking by him and his sick accomplices and and he made use of ice picks and torture devices and his fucking dog yes and that i i hope i my gosh i i don't know what happened to the dog but the things yeah i don't i don't want to get into it it is horrific so tread carefully if you decide to do any research on this guy. But there's a lot of great podcasts that cover this story too. But John had not um, known about this story, so I wanted to share it. Um, and then for any of you that haven't heard it. You know, some people are like, oh, you haven't seen this great like childhood movie? You haven't seen Dark Crystal? Well, let me share it. Labyrinth? Yeah. No, instead, Kat is like, hey, you haven't heard about the toy box killer? <laughs> it's fucked. <laughs> Come spend an hour with me. <laughs> I hate this guy. I hate his stupid girlfriend named Cindy. I hate people named Cindy. And is that his fucking face? He looks like he belongs in the, as a cast of Yellowstone. He looks like Wilford Brimley's fucking perverted brother. This is the room. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's his accomplice. That's Cindy, yeah. You know when you look at a, a dumpster fire? <laughs> yeah, she looks like that plus ugly. Yeah. I'm gonna show the daughter. It's Jesse Ray McGrath or whatever the fuck. Parker. She looks fucking insane. She looks like she belongs in a goddamn Rob Zombie film. Yeah. And this this is his torture room here. That's the oh, chair. Oh, that's fucked up. That is some marathon man. Can you imagine just Shit. waking up to that? The makers of Saw. Oh, must have been highly. Inspired I wonder by this. if they were inspired. Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah, and all and this piece of garbage just dies from a heart attack. That's so unfair. Like this, I know these three ass wipes should have been crucified and have shit flung at them for days. <laughs> yes, I feel like these people that um, do these things should be subjected to their own methods. Yeah. Do you know, like he, eye for an eye, absolutely. Yeah, he should be held in the gyno chair and have everything that he did um, to them done to him. Oh yeah, someone should be like going at his fucking foreskin with oh, a goddamn toenail clipper. Stop! <laughs> oh my god! Absolutely, turn him into a flute. Oh my god! I like felt that, even though I don't know how, but I. I felt that pain fuck, <laughs> fuck that anyway so that is the story of david ray parker also known as the toy box killer and i just also want to say it's an epic um survival story of uh cynthia vigil and the other survivors ah oh, folks thank you for getting through that with us i was expecting when when you hear toy box killer i was expecting like a clown you know who went after children you know, or Hellraiser. No, he just had <laughs> his own like the... toy box. Oh, that's so fucking yeah. disgusting. And you, if you thought this week was depressing, just wait until next week. Oh, fuck. Well, thanks for that. Yes. Time for Tiny Tina. Uh, thank you, folks, for listening and thank you lasting for this long. sticking around. Yeah. Yeah. We do do this for you guys, so. So that was 36 years. 36 years. So that's 200... like what? That's basically one life sentence. 200 well she's out now how does this fucker get out i just don't know how she would pass the risk to not reoffend. no like because i i kept it out but if you go into the history of what drew these two together so oxygen's killer couples covers this really well on how they found each other you know because you always wonder how do uh, people like this find each other um, she came from like a really crazy upbringing. So it just, it, her risk of reoffending, finding another person like this. Like look at Carla Homoka, the Canadian who oh, she can had shit. a child with a sex predator. You know, it's like she's, she's like, first it was Paul Bernardo 
And then gets out of prison and has a conjugal visit with a sex predator that's in prison and gets fucking pregnant, you know, and is living a cushy lifestyle as a parent. Like, she she gets to keep her child. Like, I just don't understand how Cindy Hendy could have gotten away with the risk of not to reoffend. To me, I feel like she could just be out there at a bar somewhere, meet another guy that's fucked up like this, and start all over again. What state was this again? Elephant butt New Mexico. <laughs> Is New Mexico like a fucking blue state? Oh, that's a good question. Let's take a look. Democratic Party. Yeah, see, there's our answer right there. That's a good point. What? When When did she get out? 2019? 19. Fucking imbeciles. I wonder when she was born. Like, I wonder how old she is now. So when she was released, she did also have to serve two years of in-house parole, so house arrest. Oh, who fucking cares? You just sit around watching Coronation Street all fucking day. Why don't we wrap it up here? Let everyone get on to their week. Yeah. I've already gotten too pissed off. (laughs) I'm so pissed off. Fucking stupid idiots. I think that's what... I I think I hate it worse. Like, I I hate the criminals. Mm -hmm. I hate it worse when they don't get the fucking punishment they deserve. Mm -hmm. And then I hate it even worse than that when they are allowed to fucking live their lives again. Well, I just don't know why they made the deal with him to say, like, oh, I'll plead guilty to every charge if you let my daughter go. Buddy... A jury probably would have fucking convicted you anyways. I would have taken the risk. If he would have said, I'll plead in exchange for my daughter's release, I'll tell you where all the bodies are of the people that I've killed, or I'll give you all the names to the people that I've tortured, that's different. But to say I'll plead guilty for my daughter's release, like, you could have pled not guilty, and I'm sure you would have been convicted to the same sentence. So... I feel like Jesse Ray got off way too easy. But um, on a lighter note, stay tuned to our Instagram in the next couple, <laughs> <laughs> our next couple weeks because we'll be posting like a Q and A that we're gonna be doing live. Well, not live, but that we're gonna be doing an our own episode for. If you have your own podcast or website or Facebook page or whatever it is, we will shout out to your page as well if we feature your question on our episode. Yeah. So please, any question you want algebraic questions geography questions um we don't do history clearly (laughs) and uh science science uh controversial questions john loves the political questions so keep those coming yeah but i I, I make it very like ambiguous my leaning yeah but if you want to (laughs) know our favorite true crime podcast or our favorite color our favorite movie our favorite pop star really yeah (laughs) Uh, Britney Spears 99 for John. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, so... and, and you are more of like a... You're, you're a Josh Lucas kind of drooler. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, it was Josh Hartnett as an actor. If, it, if I had to go with uh, singers, it was Backstreet Boys or Hanson. Hanson. I... Not the Moffats? Oh, yes. The Moffats. Oh, man. Gonna have to get a new office chair. <laughs> All right, folks, that's enough of that shit. Have a lovely, lovely fucking day and a lovely week. And we'll see you next week. Good night. Goodbye. (laughs) Ta-ta. You can check us out on YouTube at Catam Concoction. That's C-A-T-A-M-C-O-N-C-O-C-T-I-O-N. And on Instagram at cast underscore aghast. Remember, there's a silent H. Right. <coughs> Shut oh, up. Fogged up my glasses. Oh fuck. That's you have, a terrible. You have seized your assault. Do I have seized assault? You can't fucking no. There's no camera on. They, they don't give a shit. But if I, I they don't know what it. I look like. I care. see it. Oh, you're you're throwing my commentary off. David Parker was sentenced in. Oh, sorry. What, why can't you type? <laughs> I do this at work. Stop. Oh my god. That um, that survived his
toy you box. You're gonna burp and belch on the fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? <laughs> 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 so you're trying to feed a baby bird? <laughs>